Hello everyone, thank you for attending the talk. I am Slava. I have been doing security research at Checkpoint for many years. Reverse engineering and vulnerability research is my daily work. Today I want to share my experience of hacking Amazon Kindle e-reader devices using a crafted ebook. Personally, I use Kindle a lot, but uh, I've never heard about a malicious book. It was a reason for me to research how to create such a book that could be used to root remotely and take full control of a Kindle device. Amazon has announced that since 2007 they have sold tens of millions of Kindle devices. It's impressive. And I tried to find some statistics about that and yes, uh, the Amazon Kindle is the most widely owned uh, e-reading device in the USA. There were 10 generations of Kindle readers on the market and almost all of them are still supported. Typically, users connect uh, their Kindle devices to a Wi-Fi network and Wi-Fi protocol stack can be used as entry point to attack the Kindle. But uh, using an e-book uh, to reach device is much easier and uh, mass attacks are possible. What ways does Amazon offer uh, to send a book to a Kindle? If we are talking about your own device, you can uh, log into your Amazon account and use the prepared Chrome extension, PC or Android applications, or just use a USB cable to transfer the file. Another way is to use the send to Kindle by email Amazon service uh, to send a book as an email at attachment. In this case, you should know the unique email address of the targeted Kindle device including six random characters, uh, so it's difficult to brute force. In addition, uh, the ability to spoof was fixed by Amazon a year ago, and now the recipient needs to confirm uh, the transfer if it was sent from an uh, unapproved email address. All of the above uh, suggests that efficient campaign is only way for the attacker to reach your Kindle. Dozens of free online libraries are open to upload uh, and download ebooks. An attacker can easily upload a malicious book uh, for free access uh, because no one expects to see malware targeting the Kindle. Most libraries only care about the correctness of the metadata of the uploaded book. So, when downloading an ebook, from an online library, you can never be sure uh, of its content. Okay, now let's deal with the Kindle device itself. The latest version of the Kindle e-reader firmware is publicly available on the official Amazon website. Uh, the source code is also uh, partially available there, but there is no source code for components responsible for parsing and rendering books. In addition, uh, I jailbroke uh, one of my Kindles. Uh, it's clear that the research will go faster if you can uh, see running processes and can debug Kindle services. The most general way to jailbreak is through the serial port. Uh, I took the photo. Let's take a quick look at the Kindle architecture. Basically, uh, the Kindle OS is a Linux kernel uh, with a set of native programs, mainly provided by BusyBox, uh, the libc subsystem for inter-process communication, and uh, the Java and WebKit subsystem for user interface and services. The libc is a dbus-based IPC library and its environment that links all Kindle components together. Uh, a Kindle process can use this library to start apps, uh, expose application settings, listen for or emit events. For example, a WebKit application can use the libc to interact with a Java service or a native application. 
Most of the UI is written in Java, and the Java subsystem, the framework, implements libc handlers for providing services and for providing a user interface, uh, so-called booklets. The WebKit subsystem, I mean HTML5 and JavaScript, is another way to create UI elements. Uh, the built-in experimental browser is a part of the WebKit subsystem. The pillow is a library that uh, allows access to the libc from JavaScript. Good. Who parses ebooks? You put a new book on your Kindle device. Who is going to handle the file first? The scanner service uh, periodically scans the documents directory uh, for new files and, uh, depending on the file extension, uses one of the extractor libraries to extract metadata from the ebook. All extractors uh, are listed in uh, the app registry database and uh, there is a handler for each of the supported Kindle ebook formats. If the scanner does not match a file extension or a parsing error uh, occurs, uh, the book will not be shown to the user. I did not go uh, deep into the scanning process uh, because extracting metadata is too simple an operation to suggest parsing errors. All that, uh, that matters to me uh, is that the malware book uh, must have the uh, correct metadata. After the scanner does the job, uh, a thumbnail of the new book is displayed on the home screen and uh, from this moment on the Java framework is responsible for opening the book when you click on it. Uh, Java archive files that implement the logic for opening and rendering ebooks uh, can be found in the opt Amazon ebook lib directory. Primarily, uh, these are jars listed on the slide. In this research, I decided to focus my attention on the PDF file format as uh, it's one of the most common and yet at the same time complex formats. Uh, on this slide, you can see the uh, function uh, to open PDF books implemented in the PDF reader impulse jars. It's only a wrapper over the native open PDF document uh, function uh, with the body in the libpdf client geniso library. Uh, the libpdf uh, PDF client geniso lib starts the PDF reader service, uh, forking the process and synchronously send it an open book message uh, via uh, the open source HTTP client server library libsoup.so. In fact, it sends a, a GET request to a specific local host URL. The PDF reader service uh, defines dozens of soup handlers uh, for the high-level PDF operations, including open book and start rendering, once we, uh, we are interested in the, the libfoxit wrapper so uh, written by Amazon provides an API for working with PDF files. I want to note only three significant functions on the libfoxit wrapper so library. These functions are good entry points for fuzzing a, a PDF tree structure. Uh, but I was lucky to find only a lot of uh, NALDI references. Uh, as the name implies, uh, libfoxit wrapper so is a wrapper over the popular foxit PDF SDK presented on uh, Kindle devices by libfpdf embedded so. Uh, this is a closed source library proprietary to foxit software incorporated. Next, I decided to focus my attention on PDF stream filters and I tried to fast the Foxit SDK library. This is a fuzzing model I used. Uh, it's a pretty classic. Uh, I used a combination of American fuzzing loop and quick emulator QMU. The host machine is Ubuntu. A simple search for the word uh, CPDF and codec in the Foxit uh, library allowed me to find all the possible stream filters. Uh, let's take a look at one of them as an example. 
As you can see, an image M1 with a JBIG2 filter is declared. Uh, JBIG2 is an image compression standard for B-level images. Uh, the JBIG2 segments uh, the input page into the regions, uh, text, uh, half-tone image, uh, refinement and others. Uh, these regions are held in the JBIG2 uh, globals stream. When rendering a PDF page, uh, the library parses the JBIG2 global stream and reconstructs the image. The JBIG2 model object uh, defined in the Foxit library is, re is responsible for decoding JBIG2 uh, compressed images. Uh, its start decode method is uh, declared as shown on the slide, and uh, I use the start decode function as uh, the fuzzing entry point and permute the image size, the image stream, and uh, the JBIG2 global stream. As a result, available vulnerability in the JBIG2 uh, decoding algorithm was found. Let's take a look at the following JBIG2 global stream. Uh, two page regions are defined uh, here, the image information region and uh, the refinement region. The refinement region contains the information needed to refine the image, including coordinates of the refining rectangle. In our case, uh, an oversized rectangle is defined. Uh, what happens uh, in this case? Uh, the JBIG2 algorithm tries to expand the base image to new dimensions. The height of the new image is recalculated as old height plus y and old height plus y multiplied by the stride. Heap memory is allocated uh, for the resized image. But there is a mistake in the expanding function and a missed check for uh, int max. Uh, the 32-bit bit register overflows and 100 bytes is allocated for the image instead of uh, 400000 bytes. By using refinement regions, uh, we can refine the data outside of the image and uh, get the arbitrary write primitive. Uh, in the following example, uh, the second refinement region uh, overwrites 16 bytes at the offset 1, 2, 3, 4, 0 bytes from the beginning of the image in the heap. Uh, the indicated data blob uh, will be decompressed by the JBIG2 algorithm and then XORed with the heap content. We can create any number of refinement regions and uh, overwrite parts of memory that uh, are at distance from each other. In addition, uh, the fact that the writing is done through a XOR operation allows us to fix only specific bits of memory and uh, bypass ACLR protection if required. As I mentioned, uh, the Foxit library is part of the PDF reader process. Uh, the data and heap segments of this process are read, write, execute. Uh, ACLR is built into the Linux kernel and is controlled by the parameter proxies kernel uh, randomize via space. Its, its default value on Kindle devices is 1 which means uh, the base address of the data segment is located immediately after the end of the executable code segment. In other words, there is no randomization for data segment and, and the heap. These two facts make uh, exploiting the vulnerability trivial. At startup, the PDF uh, reader service lowers itself to the permission of the framework user. Uh, to prove permissions of our payload, uh, I create the following simple bash file in the framework uh, working directory and launch it. Uh, the UIT9000 uh, of the framework user was printed. Well, now we have a remote code execution vulnerability in the context of the PDF reader process, uh, which operates with the framework user rights. Uh, we can send libc messages, access uh, special internal files, but we are still limited. 
we want to be a root to uh, reset all restrictions. Uh, so the second stage of the research was to find uh, a local privilege escalation vulnerability that allows the framework user to run a code under the root user. The framework user has read-write access to the app registry database. Uh, it uh, means that we can fix a database entry using the libsqlite so library uh, or by simply editing the file. Uh, we need to patch one of the command entries in the properties table. For example, I patched the browser-related entry. I set in the value field the path uh, to the payload script created using the first PDF vulnerability. Next, the framework user can request the app manager uh, represented by the app uh, MGRD service uh, to start an arbitrary application. We can send a libc message to open the browser using the lib libc so library. Uh, the presented shell uh, command will do the same. Uh, the app manager is responsible for launching built-in apps. Uh, to do this, it listens for the uh, appropriate libc events. Uh, and to start the browser app, uh, it reads the relevant entry from the application registry and executes the command specified in the value field. As we patched this database entry, uh, our uh, payload sh script will be launched. The app manager service has root rights and the uit0 will be printed by the payload script. So, uh, by combining these two discovered vulnerabilities, any malicious payload can be run as root. Now, let's take a uh, uh, at a, uh, a look at a small demo in which I use a reverse shell to remotely control a Kindle device. On the left you can see a Kindle device. Uh, the book called A Book is our malicious file. Uh, on the right, you can see the Metasploit server that I opened on Google Cloud. Uh, the user clicked on the book and at that point, the payload hidden in the book connects the remote server providing the reverse shell and then locks the user screen uh, with a window. As you can see, we gained the root permissions uh, so we can do whatever we want. For example, we can steal Amazon account cookies and uh, we can take a look at uh, device private keys. Here we go. To summarize, uh, I demonstrated how an ebook can be malware. Uh, as a the malware code is executed uh, with root user rights. Uh, just opening such a book can lead to irreparable damage. The attacker can delete or resell your ebooks, uh, taking money for themselves, can break your Kindle or convert to a bot, attack other devices in your local network, and more. The discovered vulnerabilities was, uh, were reported to Amazon in February 2021 and uh, now both are fixed. Thank you for your attention. Uh, you can find many good security researchers on the Checkpoint Research blog.